Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Activity Strong Executive Edition webinar. My name is Megan McMahon, and I am the Director of Strategic Development here at Link Senior. For today's webinar, we will be providing you with one free NAB, NCAP, NCCDP, and NCTRC CEU credit. And to be eligible for those credits, you do need to remain on this webinar for the full hour. At the end of the webinar today, I will provide the required post-webinar CEU survey evaluation link in the webinar room chat box. And I will also send that to you by email this afternoon. So be sure to check your spam folder in case it lands there. This CEU survey must be completed by midnight Eastern time this Thursday. And if you have any questions about our CEU process, you can email us at webinars at linksenior.com. Please note that the CEU certificates will be issued by email before the end of the day on Friday, December 23rd. I will now go ahead and hand it over to Charles Deville Morin, CEO and co founder of Link Senior. Charles? Thanks, Megan. Welcome, everyone. Good, uh, good afternoon, good morning. It's a pleasure to be with all of you for our last, last, last Activity Strong webinar of the year. As a reminder, Activity Strong is this platform um, kind of created and built uh, to acknowledge the amazing work of activity and life enrichment professionals. Uh, we did start it with LinkedIn, but we do it in partnership with three amazing organizations, which are Activity Connection, NAP, and NCAP. And so today, as Megan mentioned, it is a quote unquote executive edition where I have the pleasure of uh, having hosting uh, Christy van der Westheisen, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for a great organization called Legend Senior Living, where she's going to talk to us a little bit about this really amazing, sometimes underutilized, but with a lot of opportunities, uh, partnership between sales, marketing, and life enrichment. So before we get started, just a few uh, kind of background uh, pieces of information. And actually, just actually before I get started, as a reminder to everyone using the chat today, please make sure to select from the drop down everyone so that everybody from the audience can, um, can see your, your very valuable contribution. So as uh, we mentioned, my name is Charles Vilmoen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Link Senior. Uh, Link Senior, we're, we're proud and we like and we love and we, uh, we encourage everyone to participate in our different uh, initiatives. One of them is old people are cool, just on the bare fact that we're not a fan of segregation based on age, and we think that everybody is cool, including uh, older people. And an activity strong, as I mentioned, is really this initiative to support you all, but really help advance this uh, discipline of activities and life enrichment. So, as I mentioned, Link Senior, you know, we are a resident engagement platform. We touch the lives of 50,000 older adults um, in the US and Canada. We uh, essentially help uh, professionals, the frontline professionals do more what they love to do, which is to engage residents with meaning and purpose. We're proud of the fact that we are evidence-based. And if you have any interest or questions, feel free to reach out. So today we're gonna talk about, as I mentioned, this partnership. And I think that it's, it's kind of super cool to have you, Christy, um, you know, these are the, sorry, these are the webinar objective, but as I mentioned, uh, Christy is the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And before I kind of give you the rein, Christy, there's something that I did want to mention, which is that, you know, when we think about our industry, um, sorry, background is, I think that words do matter a lot, right? And um, when we think about our, our industry, we talk about senior living. We all agree that living is purpose. And we think that people that unlock these purpose, this purpose are really activity and life enrichment professionals. So I'm really excited to have you. Thanks for joining. I'll turn off my camera and let you present uh, and then come back in a few seconds for in a few minutes for uh, our discussion. Thanks a lot. You got it. Well, thank you for that great introduction, Charles and Megan. I am absolutely thrilled to be here with you all today. Um, and if you notice, 
you know, I wish I could say this was truly my background for the day, uh, but it's not. It's, of course, a, a Zoom background, and you'll know why I chose a cruise ship background uh, in just a little bit. But um, a little bit about me, and I know Charles uh, gave me that very, very warm introduction, um, but just a little bit more on um, who I am and my experience in senior living. So yes, I'm the SVP of sales and marketing at Legend Senior Living. My family and I just moved from Southern California to Wichita, Kansas about uh, two and a half months ago. Uh, and I'm a born and raised Southern California beach bum. So um, Wichita life has been a, a, a big change, but a very welcome change actually. And so a little bit more about Legend Senior Living. We have 44 communities in the Midwest, as well as um, some on the East Coast, including Florida and Pennsylvania. And I have 14 years in senior living. Uh, I wish I had a whole lot more, but you know, um, you'll hear a little bit more about my story in a bit. Um, but uh, about 18 years in sales and marketing, I started my senior living career at Integral Senior Living uh, in the LA area. And um, moved to MBK Senior Living about four years ago, and then joined Legend, um, gosh, just two months ago. All right, so that's a little bit about me. So in order for you to fully kind of understand where I'm coming from, when I talk about sales, marketing, life enrichment, the exponential partnership, I would like to explain um, a little bit about how I got here. And I think, I hope you enjoy this uh, kind of this story um, of how I got to be in senior living. And, and, you know, again, I wish I joined senior living a whole heck of a lot long, longer time ago, um, but you'll, you'll see why and how it all folded, unfolded. So way back when, um, in, right outside uh, or right when after I graduated high school, I became a Girl Scout camp counselor. And um, so this is just a, a picture of, um, of some girls and um, at Girl Scout camp, but I was a camp counselor during the summer um, in between my um, college years. So I was a camp counselor for four summers. And if you ever hear me being called or referred to as Bert, Funny enough, that is my camp name, and my best friend still calls me Bert to this day. She never, ever uses my name. Christy, she calls me Bert, as in Bert and Ernie. So I started out my career uh, in true activities, specializing in the Girl Scouts. All right, so fast forward, I graduated college. I have a degree in broadcast journalism and public relations, but about um, in my junior year of college, I had an internship uh, where I was on camera every day and I actually did not like it. I did not enjoy uh, knowing that I would be on camera every single day um, speaking to just a camera. I really wanted that human interaction and that engagement um, rather than just talking in a microphone and a camera. So after I graduated from college, I went, huh, what do I want to do? And uh, in life, and I got a job at Disneyland because I went to Chapman University, which is um, very close to Disneyland. It's in Orange County. And um, I was one of the um, surveyors, basically. So you would walk into Disneyland. And I wish I could say I was a princess, but no, nope, I was not. I was uh, the person that scanned your ticket after you went in and asked you all about what zip code you came from that day, um, how you got there, where you were staying. I was basically a data collector for, uh, for Disney. And this was way before tablets were like 0.5 pounds. This was way back when you, it was, it felt like you wore a desktop computer around your neck. So just imagine that not a glamorous job, but someone's got to do it. So real soon after I joined the Disneyland family, I got to work at Disney Channel. And for some of you, uh, you may know or not know, um, Phil of the Future, it was a live action Disney Channel show. I believe it was for three or four seasons. And I got to be in the production, um, on the production crew of Phil of the Future. And I got to meet lots of Disney executives and, um, and just really fell in love with the Disney customer service and hospitality um, mantra. All right. So. I also, after the Disney Channel concluded, 
I had this nagging feeling that um, I never studied abroad in college. And that was always something that I had wanted to do and never got to do because I really enjoyed my college experience and didn't want to leave um, to study abroad. So I never did. Well, an opportunity came uh, to knocking and um, or maybe waving like um, on the ocean, but I got to work on a cruise ship. And I was an assistant cruise director. So if you know the love boat, think Julie from the love boat. And um, and I did six months as a an assistant cruise director. We called them social host cruise staff. Um, but my days were filled with um, bingo calling, line dancing, socializing, trivia, mini golf, basketball, just really um, a lot of um, interaction with our guests and passengers on the cruise ship. So I only did that six months. My goal was to do it a whole heck of a lot longer, um, but you'll you'll know why in just a little bit of why that did not last as long as I would have loved for it to last. Okay, so after I finished my um, my stint on the cruise ships, I found myself in selling title insurance in real estate. And I loved sales and I loved relationship building, but I couldn't really tell you what title insurance was, right? So I don't know if, if you're like me, but you like to know you make a difference in people's lives every day. And four, four and a half years into my career as a, an account executive in, um, in title insurance, I felt, you know, oh, can I do this for a lot longer? I, I loved sales and I loved relationships. I worked for some amazing people, um, but I knew that my time was short in, in title insurance, but I loved sales. So enter Grandma Jean. So Grandma Jean, right around this time as I was having an like midlife crisis or a quarter life crisis, um, we found out that um, my grandma, my grandma was no longer able to live on her own anymore. And at that time, my parents, who were the powers of attorney for Grandma Jean, and went to twelve different senior living places, and we were looking for an amazing memory care experience for her. Um, and uh, they went to twelve places, and they picked an amazing one, but. During that time, they said, okay, Christy, we know you're you're not loving um, your career right now. We met 12 people that remind us of you. You should really look into senior living. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what that is, but okay. So I took a chance and um, went on Craigslist. Uh, again, 14 years ago, went on Craigslist, found a job for a community sales director with Integral Senior Living, and um, they took a chance on me, someone with no senior living experience, but loved people, um, loved older adults, absolutely loved my grandparents growing up, um, and really wanted to make a difference in people's lives every day. They took a chance on me, and I, and I hope um, that they feel like it was a great decision because it was the best um, kind of leap of faith that I could have ever done besides marrying my husband, which I'll tell you about in a second. So that's my trajectory into senior living. And I think it's important to realize that there was not a linear journey into senior living. And I don't know that many people who do have a linear journey. We all have these really cool different background experiences that makes it a really unique industry full of professionals from other industries, people who have these amazing experiences that they can bring to senior living. So I had a lot of fun <laughs> finding these old pictures, but this was my life on a cruise ship. And there's a ton more pictures. And, and, I, and I picked the, um, the best ones that described my experience um, on the cruise ship. But kind of starting from the, the left um, to the right uh, was on the left, it was me and um, some of my uh, team members. We, we did line dancing every week and we all were taught a line dance. And, um, and, and our job was to teach it at the nightclub uh, on our country Western night. So that was our country Western night. Um, um, on the right side, that's me and the MS Mazdam uh, showing off my um, 
my transportation to get to wherever we were that day. Um, clockwise, that was disco night. And I unfortunately, I was not wearing my typical wig. I had a, a giant, I don't know, probably 24 inch um, wig. But that was, I guess that was a day where I didn't feel like um, putting a wig on. But usually we dressed up for every single um, experience that we had. Okay, now bottom right hand side, that's the love of my life. Rainier Vander Westhuizen, and I met him a week into my cruise ship journey. He was also working on the cruise ship as a photographer and the photo gallery manager. So that's us, um, probably a week in, or two into dating, um, and in the in the photo gallery. And if for any of you who have been on cruise ships before, know that the photo gallery is where you go to look at one of the 50 pictures that were probably taken of you over your, your time uh, on the ship. So that's where I got to spend most of my break time um, is hanging out with Rainier in the photo gallery. So, uh, and then on the very left-hand side, that was in, um, in Scotland. And uh, that was one of our first um, trips off the ship um, when we were uh, just newly dating. So, uh, and then the middle picture is me wearing that very flattering Holland America line uniform, complete with um, khaki pants, a polo shirt, and um, and it was very cold outside because we did a transatlantic cruise where we were dodging icebergs, which is a fantastic and also um, very scary experience if you've seen Titanic, but I have been told by many a crew members that they can see the icebergs two days in advance with uh, advanced technology. So have no fear. It was pretty fun um, to dodge the icebergs knowing that we wouldn't be hitting any of them. But we we got to go to some amazing places. We went to 30 countries in the six months of adventure um, that we had. So the reason I said it was a short-lived adventure is my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, and we've been married um, almost 16 years, but we realized we were in love and we wanted to get married. So I needed a job on land to sponsor his visa because he is uh, from Johannesburg, South Africa. So I had so much fun digging up these old pictures and just kind of reliving the cruise ship life. Um, and I hope I can impart some wisdom uh, to for you today. So um, I had a light bulb moment though, just recently looking at all these amazing pictures and amazing memories. And, um, and so you might think that my most memorable experiences on the cruise ship with my job um, would be the big bingo games or the really cool mini golf or shuffleboard competitions or table tennis competitions, which I loved. Um, or it was the cannonball contest that we did in the pool. You might think that that is, that is my most memorable experience or, or the passengers most memorable experiences. But I have to tell you, um, my most memorable times on the cruise ship were one-on-one -on -one or small group interactions with passengers. It was learning where they came from, learning what their career was before retiring. And, and the majority of the, the cruise uh, passengers on our, our ship um, were retired individuals. So I got to hear all about their, um, their kids, their grandkids, their professions, their town where they came from, um, what they love to do, why they love cruising. There are a ton of people who cruise. It seriously feels like um, their life's work is to go on as many cruises as humanly possible. So it was really cool to hear their um, experiences, whether it was on other cruise ships or on other um, cruise lines as well. So I want you to think about that, those little itty bitty interactions um, as we the, that are the most meaningful um, as we talk a little bit more about sales, marketing, and life enrichment. All right, so um, hope you remember all of these awesome pictures um, because that that was my life for six months and, and I wouldn't trade it for the world because it really did change the trajectory of, of my life. All right, so you're probably here, of, um, uh, here to hear some sales, marketing, life enrichment. How do we all work together? Um, and uh, simple, we all work together. 
there, there's your answer, mic drop. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about first impressions and then um, the tour experience and the resident experience and how life enrichment and sales absolutely works together in all of those instances. So I am a firm believer that all of us impact first impressions. And that does not matter. It does not matter what your name tag says. Your name tag may not say maintenance or housekeeping or um, first impressions, but yes, they are our responsibility to make sure that first impressions are awesome. So if you're thinking about first impressions, um, I want you to think about walking into your senior living community for the first time right now. So let's pretend you've never walked in to your, uh, your community before. It's your first time, maybe you're interviewing for the job or you're looking, you're a prospect yourself or you're looking for a loved one. Um, close your eyes and I want you to think about, okay, what, is, what does it smell like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like when you walk in? What's available to taste? Is there fresh coffee? Are there snacks? What is available to taste? So, and I want you to think about how your company um, makes that very deliberate. So is there a checklist that your company has created for how to create amazing first impressions and what that looks like on a daily basis? And that's something that I, I was very, very lucky to learn at Disneyland that Walt Disney believed that it's going to be someone's first time to Disneyland every single day. So the entire team, no matter what the name tag said, whether what team they were on, we were part of the housekeeping and maintenance team because it is all of our responsibilities to make sure that that, that person who's visiting Disneyland for the first time has an impeccable first impression of Disneyland. And so I want to really challenge you that all of us impact first impressions. So if you see something that mm, may not be um, the, the, the most amazing first impression, see if you can fix it or change it. Um, or at least bring it up to your executive director to see what he or she can do to fix it. But I also want you to know that our prospects and families and residents and visitors and any customer that walks through the door, they feel it. They feel something. Maybe I should say that. They feel something. I want it to be positive 100% of the time. They're, they feel it, right? Is this a really good place or is this not so great? And again, that feeling is created and it's intentional. So I would really challenge you to walk into your community for the first time today or tomorrow with a fresh set of eyes, a fresh nose, uh, a fresh heart, um, and really see if there's something that we can do, no matter what your name tag says or what department you're in, um, that you can do to improve that. All right. Okay. So... So all of us impact first impressions. All of us impact the tour experience too. And so if you're a life enrichment director, and I really hope that you um, download the little tip sheet that we created for you because it does have some tangible things that you can do together as a sales marketing department and as a life enrichment department together, working together to create amazing experiences for your, your um, prospective residents, for your family members, and for your, your residents, of course. But all of us impact the tour experience. So if you see a prospective resident and their family uh, in the building, I would love for you to go and introduce yourself. And bonus points, if you know something about that person already, if the sales director during whatever you call your daily meeting, your daily morning standup, does the sales director know the tours that are going to come into the building? Probably. Of course, we love walk-ins and we'll be prepared for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But if the sales director knows a couple key pieces of information about a prospect or family member that's going to be visiting for the first time, sales directors, equip your life enrichment directors with that uh, information. Because that way, they can personalize what that tour experience looks like for that prospect. And so that might mean if we know that um, Betty loves playing Pinochle, 
right? And um, and she hasn't played Pinochle in a couple of years, but she really loves it. And we have a Pinochle group going on. Maybe not right then, but they it, it happens weekly. Then let's see if we can um, introduce her to some um, uh, Pinochle players, and then they can connect over that. But it's the job, in, in my opinion, in life enrichment is connection and um, and and happiness of our residents and that connection, the connectedness of our residents. And so sales, please equip our life enrichment director with information so they can help us form connection. And there is a definite um, correlation between the number of people that the prospect or the family meets and the likelihood of them moving in. There is a direct correlation between the number of, of people they meet on their tour, excuse me, on their tour, and then the likelihood of them moving in. People like to be around like-minded people and move to a place where they feel connected and feel connection to the people who live and work there. So how do we get that connection going without them meeting some of the people? And so life enrichment, I consider you a matchmaker. The goal is to find that piece of that piece of information, that nugget of information for every tour that you can cling to and act on it. And again, bonus points if you can act on it and um, for for to, to make that person's day. So love those little wow moments that show our prospects and our residents and families that they're seen, that they're heard, that they're valued. And those are the, the things that, um, that are so personal to each person. So yes, life enrichment, you impact the tour experience so greatly. I, I hope you feel that impact because um, you directly impact the feel of the building um, and that connectedness that our uh, prospects and family members will hopefully feel during their tour. All right, and last but not least, this goes to a show that, um, hello, all of us impact the resident experience. And so again, no matter your name tag, you impact the resident experience. So it's that same level of detail and personalization that we really want to create during that sales process should follow through into the resident, the resident experience. So I love this slide because truly we are all here um, for the resident experience. And so it doesn't matter if you're sales, if you're marketing, if you're life enrichment, if you are in culinary, business office, nursing, executive director, doesn't matter. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Maintenance, housekeeping, um, you impact the resident experience. And how can you bring that level of personally personalization or that wow factor to your residents day in and day out, because we want to create that during the um, sales process, but it doesn't stop there when they move in. It just continues. And so last thing I'll say about this is our residents um, make a decision every month. They are going to write us something every month. They're either going to write the check or send it a wire transfer, but they're gonna either write a check to your community's name and happily give it to the business office director or put it in the slot, or they're going to write a 30 day notice to leave. Every month they have to make a decision. I want their decision to stay to be the easiest decision they've ever met um, or ever made. Just like the decision to, to marry my husband was one of the easiest decisions I ever made. Um, and it's all thanks to the cruise experience and taking a risk and taking an adventure because this adventure has turned into an infinite amount of adventures since then. But again, our residents make a decision every month. I want that decision to be easy to stay with us and not go across the street or across town for a seemingly better experience because I know that the experience that we craft um, can be amazing no matter what location you're at. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Charles. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. I, uh, I have to say that I love what you were saying right there. Well, I loved everything you said, but <laughs> in particular, at the, no, no, but here's the thing. 
Here's the interesting thing that is that what you were saying about the fact that every month they were making that decision, right? It's a little bit like a like a subscription in a way where you know the goal is hey renew and renew and renew, and it's true that life enrichment is such a I mean, essential part. So you could think of life enrichment as the quote unquote customer success function, if that makes yeah. sense. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So that was cool. absolutely. Yeah. And again, yeah. I mean, thinking thinking about my cruise adventure and um, yeah. and and the most impactful things, it wasn't the grandiose, giant, you know, black and white balls that we would put on for our, our of our. Pro- for our uh, passengers, although it was fun and engaging and, and lots of connections were made. But um, the things I remember are the are the conversations and the stories. And I think that that we I feel very privileged that I'm kind of a keeper of so many stories, uh, yeah. and hundreds and hundreds of stories. Yeah, and do you think um, so, you know, when we prepared, you talked about that moment when you realized that actually the one on ones do you feel this is because the uh, level of engagement was the highest or like, what do you think you remember yourself more the one-on-one versus the groups? Well, I was seeing them as an individual and asking questions and being curious. I think that that's one thing that I, I learned very early on is um, I have this crazy curiosity about yeah. almost everything and, and everyone. And I just want to know everything there is to know about everything. Um, and so that really fed my curiosity, um, to where, uh, yeah, I would get to know people so intimately just during social hour while we were, um, we had actual, um, uh, scheduled social time where we would walk around and talk to, um, guests. But what made it really cool also was we had about 500 guests per week and it would rotate. And so one of the things that we like to do um, as the, the cruise directors would be um, to uh, rem- recall things that the person may have said yesterday. And then we see them in the yeah. hall. We know their name. We, we maybe say, oh, you were going to that show. Tell me how it was last night. Because it made them realize that they're very special and mm-hmm. they're individualized and they're unique. Um, and so I think that we used to kind of play, not necessarily games, but that was a big part of our, um, uh, experience was to be able to recognize and recall hundreds of people on a weekly basis. I'd be so bad at that. (laughs) Well, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm like super great at it, but you, you do, you do learn to, to kind of have a name with the face and a story pretty quickly, but then you, then you just forget it because you have another 500 people to remember the next week. (laughs) Yeah. All right. All right. This this is interesting. So, you know, Chrissy, one of the questions that we, um, that I I thought it would be interesting to ask for the audience here is, well, talking about the audience, as you know, we have a lot of different uh, disciplines today. We, We obviously have a lot of activity in life enrichment professionals, but I also know that we have people from nursing, we have definitely people from marketing and sales, we have people from um, operations and so on. And I guess to start the conversation, well, we've already started the conversation, but like, <laughs> what would you, what would, be the, what would be the one thing you would want them to know that you feel sometimes has opportunities to kind of improve? Yes. So I do believe that the resident experience, the sales experience, the life enrichment experience all starts with, what do you think I'm going to say? The executive director. It does. It does. The entire experience starts with the executive director. They are so critically important to the success of every single building. Yes, I will say it louder for the fans in the back. The executive director, director, director. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just sitting alone in my office entertaining myself, but it's true. The, the amazing experiences, um, it, it really does start with the, um, the attention of the executive director and what he or she expects from, from his or her team yeah. um, and how they create those um, relationships um, because it's, it's not, I feel like that 
they are the best uh, representation of um, showcasing. How am I trying to say this? They lead by example, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we take our cues from them. Yeah. So if they don't want anything to do with life enrichment, then life enrichment may suffer. If they don't want anything to do with sales, then sales might suffer. So again, having a super engaged executive director is hard to find, but extremely invaluable. So let me ask you, if you might like, just to unpack this a little bit for yep. maybe we have executive directors today that feel that they're good at what they do, but they think that maybe they could improve or maybe like sales and marketing with life enrichment, you know, there might be more opportunities. What would be for them the one piece of advice you'd like to give them? Um, get involved. Yeah. So um, I get that um, you you might have times where you're in your office and you close the door because you have a, a management call or you have a this or a, I get it. I'm 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 in a closed door right now. Um, but just being seen and available um, in your departments and helping them manage their own departments is so yeah. critical. I mean, and honestly, hiring people that are experts in their fields. That makes our executive director's job not easy, but the tiniest bit easier if you hire extremely qualified people who are masters at their craft. Um, and so for, for me, for sales, the best executive director meets every single prospect that walks through the doors, meets every single sales rep um, from a vendor or a, or a different company, um, and then they're also doing some follow-up um, phone calls for every tour as well, thanking them for their time. What questions do they have? Um, if you do move forward in the moving process, I'll be handling it all. I am your go-to person um, after you move in. So um, it really sets the tone of professionalism. Um, so I, I love that. And then with life enrichment, it's getting to know um, our residents and assisting in, in any way that they can in the life enrichment process. And, and really, um, I think it's being visible and, yeah. and really getting to know our life enrichment and getting to know our residents as well. Yeah. Um, talking about life enrichment, you know, sometimes yeah. we, when I say we, like in activities and life enrichment, we feel, um, I, I don't know how to best say it, but sometimes we, well, let me say it one way, kind of completely one way. Like sometimes I feel activities, we don't truly understand sales and marketing. And, and it could be because, well, it's one, not our job, but two, we've never had the opportunity to sit down and really learn and so on. I'm going to ask you a strange question. Like, how do you all think? Like, what, what, how do you operate in your head? Like, like help us understand from, you know, I'm an activity director. So I just started about a year, like less than a year ago. I'm just getting my feet wet in the industry. How do you all operate? What's important to you? Yep. I think we're always thinking of the next step. Mm -hmm. And we're always thinking of, okay, we have this prospect. What is going to be the factor or the conversation or the, the thing that gets them to, um, to, to move in. Mm -hmm. I think we're, and I don't mean calculating. I mean, planning, yeah. strategizing, um, because, and, and I just, I know this very, very personally because I moved almost halfway across the country. Moving is challenging. I don't care if it's across the street or across the country. If you're moving, to a big house, a small house, doesn't matter. Moving is challenging. And it's our goal to understand the, the, pros, the prospective resident situation, the family mm -hmm. situation, and, and get them to, to endure the pain of moving to get to the lifestyle and the peace of mind and the life enrichment once they move in. That's a really tough job to get yeah. people. We are sellers of change. We, we, we hopefully convince people to change what they're doing, their daily habits, their everything that they've yeah. had in their house for however long of a time and moving into a different environment. We're always strategizing and saying, okay, how can we make it easier? How can we make it more like a no brainer? But how, obviously this, 
this makes sense. So we're, I think we're strategizers, but we're also connectors too. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard for us to let go and move on to our next family that we can impact their lives. Um, it could be, it could be challenging on that. Yeah, <laughs> on no, that. I'm sure. No, but I, I did like I did like what you said earlier about the fact that you help accelerate. I mean, you're helping people make the best decisions for them, right? And and yep. if they don't meet with you, it's going to be slower. It could be more painful. So you do accelerate. In that process of like strategizing, like next step and next step and next step, where do you feel are the most opportunities for activities to help you, like life enrichment? what are your basic expectations and what do you see people do super well? Excuse me. Um, Ooh. Hmm. I mean, I see when, um, when a life enrichment director can get involved as early as humanly possible in that sales process, that's when I see the magic happen. Because again, it's, it's like we're making little connections and people want to be friends and connected to people that they feel connected to. So I think that that is a piece of advice. I'm not sure if that was what you were asking. No, it, it, it was. And I'm, I mean, I know of, of some companies, what they do is that when they learn a little bit about the prospect, they then turn around and ask the life enrichment person, hey, I have a French person visiting do you have other friends? You know, like that kind of yeah. pre-connection. Yeah. So you see that happening as well? Yeah, I do. Um, I would love to see it go like one step further though. Yeah. It's not just, hey, do you have other French people? It's, hey, you do you have other French people? Oh, you do. Can we set up a meeting during yeah. the, maybe the, the family is coming back for lunch. Maybe we can arrange a meeting. I mean, we're, Sales salespeople give your life enrichment people every opportunity to be a matchmaker, a mm -hmm. friendship matchmaker. Because again, it's those one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's that connection, um, and 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 so give your life enrichment team a, an ability to make those connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like that idea, which is you know from a marketing and sales angle. We also have opportunities to grow by letting our life enrichment kind of help us in that process and being that matchmaking. So, yeah. you know, so, so, so right now we're talking about like inside the community and so on. But when you are outside of the community kind of prospecting and promoting and so on, I mean, I'm sure that if you're sitting here, you probably believe that life enrichment is like a competitive advantage, right? Like, but can you tell us how, like, how do you make it the best competitive advantage? How do you make that the, the one best tool for your, uh, for your efforts? Oh gosh. I feel like I'm a broken record connection. It is, yeah. it is, um, it, it is the connection of the people, which are the heartbeat of every single community. It's the connection and that's our competitive advantage because okay. it, I, Honestly, it's easier, easier um, to, to, for status quo to remain in your life, right? Because it's difficult to make any change. So if you're living status quo, that might mean living in your own home, which is comfortable. Mm -hmm. So we get to really coach people in helping them through the, the uncomfortable moving. But what makes it less uncomfortable is the people. Yeah. The people you know that you've connected with the people you know that are just chomping at the bit to, to get to know you better. To me, that's a difference maker um, and, and is always going to be our competitive advantage. Cool. And so a question about your organization now is, you know, you mentioned, so you obviously you, you, you have a very large role and congratulations again on that. Thank you. Promotion, uh, Chrissy. When you um, so I'm sure that Legend is the most amazing company in the world, and and rightfully so. Um, but I was wondering it'd be more amazing if this were at my actual office. I'll be honest. Okay. Soon enough. Soon enough. Uh, so I just forgot my question. Um, Sorry. No, no, no. It's an amazing company. 
it's an amazing company. No, I was I was talking about so like from a corporate role, you know, I've always been amazed because sales and marketing, you collect a lot of data. I mean, you actually do collect more data than you do, you know, in the world of activities. And I was wondering, um, you know, in your different markets right now, as we kind of close 2022 and we think about 2023. Um, whether it's your organization that is the best in the market or like some other organizations, do you feel that uh, families have changed their buying behaviors a lot, um, like in the last year? I mean, I know that the pandemic changed things, but just in the last year, mm -hmm. have, you, have you seen a lot of changes there? Yes. Yep. So what we're noticing is <clears throat> people want information, consumers. Now yeah. this this is senior living consumers, but it's also just consumers in general. Yeah, they want the information that they want when they want it, how they want it. Mm -hmm. So I think long gone are the days where people pick up the phone and call us as a yeah. senior living provider, and and say, oh, oh, you want um, I would like some pricing. Oh, let me mail that to you. Um, they they're not waiting where they're not waiting the three days for the mail to get to them with the price sheet in it. Yeah, People yeah. want information, a lot of information when they want it. And that could be at three o'clock in the morning. So honestly, um, that's the buyers. They are more educated. Mm -hmm. I would say some are some, um, some still believe that we are skilled nursing um, in the yeah. assisted living and memory care world. And so we're, we're having to do a lot more education on the website of what we are and what we're not. Um, but truly, oh, by the way, everyone's having a grand old time in these, <laughs> in these comments. Someone hey, give me a cocktail, cocktail, cocktail please. Cocktail. <laughs> I know. I love this. Um, but, uh, I forgot where I was going, but anyway, um, people want information as much as they want, or as little as they want, when they want it, how they want it. And so we need to do a better job of providing that information. Yeah. yeah. And do you think, as a side question here, Christy, do you think that's made your job or your team's job easier or harder or different? Like how, how has that changed? Yeah. I mean, personally, I, I love it. Yeah. Because um, we, people are, are, are able to self-qualify themselves a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we are getting more educated consumers picking up the phone or doing the web form fill ins. Um, and again, we're able to connect with them uh, how they want to be connected to. Because when I started 14 years ago, honestly, the only way to reach a senior living community was through the main line yeah. or on the website with a contact us form. That was it. There was not these virtual sales assistants. There weren't live chat there. I like that because it gives them more opportunity to connect with us and reach out and for us to reach out to. Yeah. So I, I love it. Yeah. You know, one question about the, the, the fact that you're collecting so much information on each individual, yep. um, you know, in life enrichments, that's a treasure trove of information we want to yes. use. And I think, you know, in a past webinar, I think it was about six or nine months ago, we talked about the fact that, Marketing and sales kind of collect all that super cool information, but sometimes it just never gets used. What, yep. what are your, yeah. Okay. So go ahead. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah. Because as salespeople, our job is to just collect as much information as possible. So we make that connection and we move them forward in the sales process, right? Yeah. Because how are you going to move me forward in the sales process if you know nothing about me? So it's our job to get to know all the things about the yeah. people, write it down in your database. Don't just keep it right here. And then hand it over to the different department heads that can use that information. It's not, it's not perfect unless you have an all-in-one system where they go from a prospect to a, um, a, a, to a, an actual resident and where mm -hmm. they're kind of their, their file yeah. travels with them in whatever database that you utilize. It's challenging. It's not impossible though. I mean, you really can press print on all the notes 
and yeah. hand it to your department heads and say, hey, we got stuff about culinary preferences. We have stuff about yeah. just lifestyle preferences, care preferences. Read this because this person's moving in in a week. Yeah. So, um, but it just, it takes it takes someone to to be proactive about that and not reactive. And personally, I would just go nuts if I were moving into a community and they already knew all the awesome things that that make me me. I mean, they pink they would paint the front door pink if they knew how much I love pink. <laughs> but um, that to me is that wow factor. And yeah. when we were talking, Charles, about the I want it to be really easy for them to write the check to us every month to yeah. subscribe to another month of living at XYZ Senior Living Community. It's things like painting the door pink. Okay, don't do not do that. Maybe it's a pink <laughs> like sign on my door, yeah. um, but it's those things that all add up to me happily writing you that check, right? Yeah. It's all those things that make me me that um, we should be collecting and disseminating for all of our residents as well. <clears throat> Yeah, no, but I, you know, going back to your the earlier part of your presentation, I, I love the the Walt Disney idea, which is that it's day one every day, like you know, like yeah. or I forget exactly what you were saying, but the, like the first impression every day, that's yep. really. Uh, and I really feel that I mean, you, you probably know this, like staffing is horrible right now, and it's hard. Yep. yeah, and historically, in activities and life enrichment, we just don't have enough staff. But when we do have enough, and some of the great activity directors they are thinking constantly about that aha moment um so it's also a question of resources as well um okay so yes i mean it's it's challenging oh my gosh yeah. it is so challenging um and to find people with the right heart and the right attitude for senior living it's challenging um if someone figures that magic sauce out will you please call me 1-800 christy um, cause it's, it's a challenge that we're all facing, but I am noticing that the people who are joining our, our team and, and our, our legend family now, they have the absolute heart for the industry. And to me that that's a, that's a great, um, that's a great thing to have. Yeah. And I know we need more of them. And, and I think that's why it, I wish I knew about this industry earlier yeah. and I hope that we can impact um, more, more people to make this a career choice earlier yeah. than waiting until you have, you know, five different careers and then choose senior living. I mean, yes, it makes for a very diverse background of, of people. Um, but I would love to have gone right out of college into senior living. Yeah, actually, I, I do have a, uh, I do have a question, <clears throat> um, for you here. So you, I mean, you didn't use these words, but I, I assume it's okay to say that you kind of fell into senior living, like, you know, you yeah. had this, yeah. So I have the same, and I think that many people probably in the audience also kind of fell into this industry. It wasn't by design. It wasn't like getting out of college. Hey, I, I want to run into that industry. Right. So it makes, I feel, I always feel that people work in this industry are unique. And sometimes I don't know how it is for you, but when I say what I do, people are like, oh, like old people and so on. Like it's less, you know, for lack of a better word, like sexy. sexy. Exactly. Thank you. Yep. Thank you no, but I guess, yep. I guess, you know, you from a sales and marketing standpoint, how do you talk about the industry to people that are non industry? Ooh. Yeah. I, I talk, I honestly, I talk about the heartbeat, which is our, our residents, our team members, our family members, and the lives that we get to impact every single day. To me, that that's, that is the difference maker. And I don't know that many industries that can say they, that they have that kind of impact on so many people. And I did a, um, a study I don't know, a couple of years ago, and, and we were celebrating the year's move-in achievements at MBK, um, mm. and it was really cool to say, okay, we moved in, I forgot the number, let's just pretend, 2,000 new residents into the MBK communities during this year, let's just say. Yeah. But the impact of, of, of those people's families and those yeah. people's families and the team members that we employed to take care of of the, the residents. It was like yeah. an impact of like 20,000 people. So yeah. you may just know that the 2000 that moved in, but that's an exponential impact 
as well. So um, I know that wasn't exactly the answer of your question, but it's so much bigger than the four walls of the community. And that that's exactly what makes question. this industry really special. Yeah, no, no, that was exactly the question, Christy. And uh, I know, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up, but it feels we could talk for the whole, whole afternoon. You know, I'm, I'm not very well, I mean, I, I've been here for some time and I, I know a little bit about the American culture, but um, <laughs> I, I didn't know too much about Bird and Ernie. And I had, while you were kind of explaining it, why, so which one is Bird, first of all, because I, I kind of Googled it on my phone. Bird, Bird is the one with the unibrow. Okay. <laughs> so why were you doing <laughs> I don't know, you know, when you're young and think you're real okay. funny. So yeah, my, my best friend is Gidget and I am Bert. So okay. <laughs> okay, cool. the, the end. Thanks for sharing. Um, well, while, we're, while we are wrapping up, uh, Christy, last question for you. Obviously it's the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. What's your one wish for people in the industry, for your peers? Like what's the one thing that you wish for them next year? I wish that more people choose senior living um, for themselves or for others. For every, and I might get the the, the data exact, not exactly right, but yeah. for every 100 people that inquire about senior living, um, 10 to 15 pe people choose senior living. I want to impact the 85 that are still okay. stuck in status quo. Okay. I, I want them to choose senior living. And we call that, and Julie Potowitz calls it the best widening the sales funnel. Yeah. So even if we could just, out of those hundred people, get a few more people to choose senior living, um, then we'll be able to make a greater impact. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's widening that sales funnel to, yeah. to be real salesy. But that's that's my wish is that it's not a scary thing. And that more people choose it, willingly choose it, because it is yeah. the right decision for them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you are bettering the lives of, of people. And like you said, like you have this, like a wider impact, the families, the staff, and so on, so on. So there's no, uh, no, uh, that's great. That's, that's pretty amazing, actually. Um, one last final thought before we wrap up. <gasps> I just want to say thank you. Yeah. This was so fun for me to go down memory lane and yeah. talk about my cruise ship days and um but it it does really um it, it really warms my heart that so many people wanted to, to hear how sales and marketing can better partner with life enrichment and and really better the lives of our residents and families to me that's the ultimate goal no but you know like with megan and i i mean and the team we think a lot about these subjects and i think that the the value for people and activities to seek stronger relationship there's also an idea that we know we can impact business but it's also about elevating the profession and like you said i mean like we said initially this this idea of subscription does exist one way or the other all right well my wish for you christy is to be on one of these cruise ships as soon as possible because it's that you love to be on these isn't it? i'm gonna so, call my husband right now okay. book it and I hope that you have one of them coming up soon. So uh, thanks a lot, Christy. Um, yeah, anytime. Everyone, uh, please stick around two seconds. I have a couple of announcements before we wrap up completely. So um, Christy, thanks again for joining us. Uh, if you have, if anyone on the line has sales, marketing, life enrichment, all of these things, one kind of jumbled up or all together or partnership, please reach out to Christy as you probably realize she's a true leader advocate for life enrichment and has a lot of innovative uh, um, ideas that, you know, I think is pretty cool and it starts from like personal experiences. So feel free to reach out. Um, please do, up, please do. Yeah. Um, yeah, please do. <laughs> so in terms of, um, so again, Christy, thanks so much for participating in this kind of a tip sheet. Everyone, Christy was nice enough to work with us on like a, a short tip to understand how to kind of either start that partnership or amplify and augment uh, this partnership with, between these two efforts of our, of our organization and our, our market. Um, 
As a reminder, you know, this is our last uh, event of the year. So thank you for the ones that have kind of joined us multiple times. The next one up is uh, with me actually. On January 3rd, I'll be kicking off the, the new year as I've been doing, I think for the last four or five years with a state of resident engagement in 2023. And I'm really honored to be joined by Alicia Fenstermacher, who's the VP of Purposeful Living with Presbyterian Senior Living. And we're going to talk a lot about where we stand today in resident engagement, identify some key challenges and, and give you ideas and advice on how to kind of correct if needed, correct them like super fast. So it's going to be very tangible, uh, um, ex, um, sorry, very tangible action points, action items. Um, for people living in Ohio and actually beyond, because it's not limited to people living with uh, people living in Ohio, we link senior partnering with the Ohio Person Centered Care Coalition. So we do have a, uh, a webinar on January 27th. Please feel free to join us. And um, our next big event with Activity Strong is um, a little bit like what we did in February of this year, where we had, I think it was over a thousand people join. Uh, it was people all around the world, from Europe, from the Middle East, from Asia. And this is in partnership with the Validation Training Institute, you know, the, the work of Naomi File. And so this is the second Validation Work Congress. So please join us. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's it, folks. Um, Christy, Bert. I'm not going to call you Bert. I guess I'll call you once in a lifetime, Bert. <laughs> Happy New Year. And thanks again for joining. Thank Take care.